On the next World in America, we visit the Colombian Americans. First, we'll get to know the Geraldos, one of the many successful Colombian American families. Later, we'll taste the earthy flavors of tostones and empanadas. And finally, we'll dance to the rhythms of cumbia and carnival as Colombian Americans celebrate their captivating traditions. It's all coming up on the next World in America. Colombian Americans come to this country knowing that they've been given an incredible opportunity. So they're coming here to work hard and get ahead. Many are well educated and what they're doing is contributing their talent to make this country an even better country than it is. They're the most hard working people. They do it to the best of their knowledge. Yeah. We're happy people, very hard working individuals, family oriented, we love our families. We are entrepreneurs by nature. At the end of the day, the system looks at us as Latinos or Hispanics. So we are Latino or Hispanics, but we're from the Colombian descent, and we carry that culture within ourselves. Colombians are a part of what we call the glorious mosaic, and they contribute to the greatness of America. Colombia is located across the equatorial line on the northwestern tip of South America. Colombia is in the, located in the northwestern part of South America. Its neighbors are Venezuela, Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, and Panama. Climates are varied. You can find deserts in the Guajira next to Venezuela to snow-capped mountains up in the mountainous Andes Mountains. Colombia is a very, very beautiful country, but we are the most diversified country in the world. By being that we have the different climates, we can have to the snow, ice, to the desert. We have two oceans, so we have beaches, we have jungle, we have rainforest, we have the Amazons. The Colombian territory was inhabited first by Indians, by different tribes, um, the Muiscas, Tayronas, Chichas, in different areas of the country. Um, the Spaniards arrived in 1499 and um, they were in control of the country until 1819 when Simón Bolívar successfully beat the Spaniards and Colombia became a republic in 1819. There have been basically four significant waves of um, out-migration from Colombia. First one after World War II and after the Korean War, Colombia, the government of Colombia, sent a peacekeeping force to Korea in support of America's uh, initiative. And the veterans of this war were given the option to migrate to the United States, and many opted for this option. Second wave was in 1965 when the U.S. government amended the Immigration and Nationality Act and reforming the quotas for immigrants in favor of family reunification. So a lot of immigrants living here brought their families. So there were a number of Colombians that moved to the United States. The third and fourth have to do in part because of the history of Colombia. In the 80s, um, there was uh, a drug uh, war in Colombia, so many left because of security issues, and this happened again at the end of the 90s until 2002 when many Colombians migrated because of security and economic reasons. Meet the Geraldos. This compelling family exemplifies the Colombian American experience. My name is Eduardo Giraldo. I was born in Colombia, Bogota, Colombia. I immigrated to the United States in 1983. My name is Patricia Mahecha. I have three kids and I live in Queens. I came to as an exchange student. I lived with an American family for a year in Wisconsin. And then I moved to New York to go to the university. I 
I came to the United States because I was uh, seeing a better future for myself. I work in insurance for 13 years. Um, I'm a broker. We have our own business with my husband. I own an insurance agency and I also am a community activist. I work with my community on a lot of issues. One of the issues being immigration. For the Geraldos, the abundance of opportunities to excel here in the United States and the possibility of being recognized for their own good merit are the very first of the many benefits that attracted them to this country. Whatever you want to be in your life, you can make it happen in the United States. And that brings you that, that, it brings that opportunity. I think that freedom that they have, they have in the Constitution really means freedom. The most attractive thing in the United States is the freedom of doing whatever you think is best, uh, follow your dreams and your goals. I was an exchange student, was, uh, I live in Wisconsin, so I was the only Hispanic in the whole town. So that was very difficult. Uh, but, but I learned early days uh, that American people are kind. And I think, I think if you're willing to share with people and you're willing to listen to advice, and somebody always will hand you a hand so you won't fall off. Clemens worked really hard here, and even people who struggle and make a basic salary can still send money back home. Uh, last year, Colombians sent $4.5 billion in one year, so that just gives you um, an idea of the, the large sums that Colombians are sending back home. live in New York and uh, this is a very diversified community because we can have Chinese, Japanese, uh, Indian, all over. In order for me to learn the culture of everybody else, I had to travel all over to get it, but the kids in here, they get to learn so many cultures and languages. New York brings everybody together, and what it makes, what is amazing is that we all coordinated to one purpose, to better our families, to better our companies, to better our country, and we all work towards one goal, to, you know, to live in peaceful. You know, we have all these neighborhoods, and we have no problems. I, I think that makes New York great. Eduardo was a very successful yo-yo player as a kid in Colombia. Yo-yo is something that we as a Colombians used to do when we were little kids. He taught me how to play the yo-yo, but I didn't really I don't really know how to do the tricks yet. Like the yo-yo that springs from one end to another with enormous ease, the Geraldo family also bounces back and forth gracefully from English to Spanish and everything in between. In the house we speak English and Spanish. So I call that we speak Spanglish. Spanglish is the transnational language. I say we all, we all do it. Um, and we all understand each other. We don't even realize we're speaking Spanglish. Well, when I was little, I used my mom, my parents made me speak Spanish, that way I would learn it more better. I learned to speak Spanish. Uh, I really don't know, I just start speaking it. And I can speak it comfortably. We try to send them to Colombia every year to learn, to learn and to write Spanish. Sometimes we see ourselves, we speak in English for our children. And sometimes we make an effort to start speaking Spanish, and we and we go back. Listen, guys, we gotta speak Spanish because you know we gotta. We uh, if you learn two languages when you grow up, you'll be powerful bilingual. It's gonna help you out in your career and your work. So that's important. Being an immigrant in the U.S. is definitely not an easy task. Although the language barrier was the initial difficulty. Bringing up a successful and culturally rooted family becomes the ongoing challenge for the Geraldos. 
Colombians face a lot of challenges. In order to assimilate or adapt and work in this country, you need to be able to speak English well. I didn't know how to speak English, so I say I was taking a shower, and I was living with the American family. I say, and I say, Mom, America, my American mom, 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 can you bring me a can? Can you bring me soup? And I was, I have, there was no soap in the bathroom, so I say, Why? Can you bring me soup? So she brought me a can of Campbell soup. That part, when when you're learning English, a lot of times you cry, because. Uh, you're far away from home. I was by myself, far away from my mom and dad and my sister my, and my brothers. And that was difficult. People laugh at you because you learn the language, you know. And you gotta go like, Psh, forget about it. You just laugh with them too. And make, make, make fun of your own mistakes. I think that's the best way to learn. The most challenging is me as a woman, uh, entrepreneur, and be Hispanic. Those are the major challenges that I have right now. I always like to see my son friends, so that's why I do, I cook for them because I, I get to know them. Uh, because over here, every parent and every, every father and mother, they work. So the kids, their kids are in the streets, so we don't know. And when they get 13, 12 years old, they, they want to go out. And they're, you know, well, you can say, don't go out, they have to go out. So sometimes what I do is I drive around and I check them out to see which, which friends is he going through. Put possession under my shirt and the side that didn't have any holes begin to water, but my heart sank as I would look into an empty, empty trash. trash can. All my they have to do at least 10 minutes homework with them, or at least check the homework, or you know, tell the, ask them how was school, even if I'm tired, whatever I feel. But I try, I don't, I want my kids to be better than me. If you're ever in Queens, New York, and hungry for some authentic Colombian cuisine, make sure to stop by La Pequena Colombia. We are open since 1984, so it's already 25 years. Our ingredients are, are based on tomato, uh, pepper, onions, cilantro. That's our, the, the ingredients we use the most. The best way to begin your meal in a Colombian restaurant is with an order of empanadas. This is a corn, a beef, and potatoes. Uh, this is traditional to eat for appetizer. Plantains are utilized to their fullest in Colombian cuisine. A great example is tostones. I go to fry the green plantain. This is, this is for all Colombia eat the good plantain. It's good, let me fry there. After the plantains are fried, they are pounded flat the flat plantains are then fried once again until they are crisp and golden brown. You have to put it in the fry like a, maybe in two minutes only, you know? And finally, they are served with a special green sauce. This is the sauce you come in with a green onions, a cilantro, a hot sauce. It's delicious. After a 
course of tasty appetizers, it's time to taste a Colombian main course, the Muchacho Reino. It is a meatloaf stuffed with eggs and carrots. Here they cook it to perfection, topped with zesty mushrooms. This is beef soup too, you know, with the mushroom, cilantro, and the vegetables, no. carrot, green beans, and broccoli. The muchacho side. Put in the tray with the vegetables. Okay, this is a big place. Beautiful, delicious. This is the food we serve here. Please join us, you are very welcome. Bring your family, bring your friends, and be part of this family of La Pequeña Colombia. For every culture to express itself through the arts is a vital part of its existence. Colombian Americans are no different. Reminiscent of their rich past, this Colombian American dance company cherishes the rhythms of their tradition and shares it with others through events like this one in Central Park, New York. The name of the group is called Estampas Negras and the director is Enrique Alvarado. He's been a director for the, since his initiation. I started with three dancers, and now we, uh, the group is composed for uh, 28 dancers and 20 girls. I met Enrique and I, I felt that what he was doing was so true and so noble that that's why I decided to be part of the group. Each dance comes from a particular region in the country, but on this kind of show, we try to put all of it together to make one dance as, as briefly as possible as we can. My personal favorite is actually the last one, which is called Carnaval. It comes from Barranquilla, and it's a little, um, a little bit of everything, a little African, a little, um, Spaniard, it's a, it's a little of everything and my favorite step is more of a contraction step. It's mostly African where you move your body a lot and it's fun. It's a lot of movement to it, it's not so limited like for example the cumbia, you're like standing still and moving without a lot of contraction and the last move there's a lot of freedom. Art is seldom solely for its own sake. It often has many purposes. Here, for Colombian Americans, the art and ritual of dancing has vital implications. Personally, I see it as a way for us to maintain our tradition. Um, it's a bonding thing with other Colombians and a bonding with my parents, their culture, with me, second generation and third generation, that we have something in common to give. I feel more Colombian while I'm doing the dances because since I wasn't born over there, it's hard for me to understand it. But while I'm dancing, I feel comfortable. I feel like I'm Colombian, even though I'm, I'm, I am, but I'm not at the same time. It's very important to know where you are from, where you're coming from, and also for the people who are not even Colombian to understand history of other nations, to understand even your own. Mm -hmm. 
the majority of people that come to our shows are usually Colombians, but it's always a different variation of people. And they they come and they are amazed of what we do. They uh, applaud us. Miraculously, we do get standing ovations for our hard work and what we do. As Colombians become part and parcel of this nation, they look toward the future with hope and a few concerns. The future I see challenging, uh, but I see it bright. The second generation is still a bit connected and their families, their parents teach them the customs. What worries me more is third and fourth generation when the, the grandchildren become fully American and that's gonna be harder to keep the traditions. We're going to be the biggest majority in this country by 2050. In the future, Colombians will continue to succeed in their different fields. I think one thing we have to work on is see, see, um, try to get Colombians to participate politically. We can have a Hispanic president sometime in the future, but we got to be well, we got to we got to be we got to be wise. We got to be hard workers. We got to contribute to the system and embrace the American system.